we're going to do tonight is uh, once we get started, then uh, we'll do some table study as well. So it's not a team event like first, second, third prize, but it'll be a, an opportunity where you can get together and figure out some of these answers as you go through it. It's not difficult, but it's a Bible study, so it's going to refer you to the scripture of a certain information. Now, as far as announcements are concerned, I think I just gave the most important one. There's no Bible study on campus next week. And there's no Bible study on campus the following week. So for the next two weeks, there's no Bible study. Uh, and then we're going to have Bible study, it would be the weekend of New Year's Eve, right? Or New Year's. So that would be the next Bible study. So we will make sure everybody's informed either by telephone call, text message, email blast, or the midweek hello. So everybody will know what's going on. Fair enough? Yes. All right. So that's that. Um, I think that's it. That's the most important thing on announcements. And uh, what we're going to do is everybody's got their uh, their study for the night, right? The gifts of Christmas. Everybody's got one? All right. I'm going to open this in prayer. We're going to open with a psalm. Uh, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and get started in our Bible study. Yes, Shirley. I just wanted to make a comment so everybody here could hear it. Uh, this, what he was talking about tonight at service about Pastor fear. Court. About fear. Fear. And I don't know if anybody here knows what fear means. False evidence acting real. False. False. False evidence acting real. That's a great acting. Yeah, it's a great acting. Very good. I just thought I'd share the other everybody. You know, I was listening one day, but false evidence means it's a lie. So a lie sometimes can can cause us to be fearful when there's no reason to be afraid. Okay. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, it's just build up in the mind. Okay, thank you. Right? Uh, but I got to tell you, I could go anywhere in my house at any time, except when I was about eight years old and going down in the basement at dark. And I knew there were monsters down there. I knew the boogeyman was down there. And I knew anything down there was running around, it was waiting for me. And uh, so I just, I would never... That was off balance to me. In fact, anywhere where there wasn't light, I couldn't go. Because it was like, uh-oh, there's a, there's a, you know, oh, it was, I was in trouble. So I don't know why, but uh, the imagination is amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. All right, let me go ahead and uh, open us a prayer uh, clip, and then we're going to, Start off with a beautiful song. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. What a terrific message that you placed on Pastor Corey tonight, Lord. It was so powerful. Lord, you know, sometimes we know the story. But the way it's told and it's reminded to us and that we have nothing to fear when we have you. We give the enemy, sometimes we give him too much credit. We know he's powerful. We know that this it says in Peter's, he's just he's he's just laying there in the weeds, waiting to devour us. And Father, we just know with the confidence that we have in you, we walk in strength, and we walk in much much greater power when we walk in your footsteps. So, Lord, when we go into this season, we're praying that every one of those invite cards, the thousands that were sent out. If only one comes to know you as a result of this effort, well, we will celebrate that victory with you, Father. We love you. We celebrate you. And it's in your precious name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Okay. What? Boom. Goes the weasel. <laughs> Mike, did you get hurt? <laughs> okay. The gifts of
of Christmas, <clears throat> none are more important than Jesus Christ. But I think it would be a good opportunity to study. Did I knock this off? Good to hear me good. The gifts of Christmas. True or false? Now, like I said, you you allowed the team up. We're gonna we're gonna do some table Bible study here, so you can uh, partner up and uh, work out some of these uh, questions that are on here. Okay. But true or false? Starting right off the bat here. Um, it's true. It's true. true. And you know what I forgot? This is my Bible. My Bible. My Bible. <laughs> this is God's love letter to me. I read it daily. I thank you, Lord, for my Bible. Now prepare my mind and my heart as I study your word tonight. All right, amen. Okay, now, true or false? The first one is true. Not when he was born, but a few years after Jesus was born, the wise men arrived to worship him. There were priests and astrologers from the Middle East who had properly learned that the Jewish Messiah, through the writings of who? Old Testament. Isaiah? Isaiah? Starts with a D. Daniel. Daniel. There's no book of David, I don't think. Book of Psalms. About David. Yes. Okay. True or false? These men brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh to give the young child. Not only were these appropriate gifts for a king, but each also carried a specific pro pro <coughs> prof prophetic significance. That's true. That's true. That's true. All right, take a second, and I want you to read the first 12 verses of Matthew 12. And I need three volunteers. I'll be one. You got one? All right, there's one. Do I, I, I need a two. I need a second volunteer. Mike, number two. And I need somebody to back clean up. Who's going to bring it home? Okay, Carol, thank you, sweetie. All right, Laquita. Laquita. Medora. And I know. You've got the first four verses. Mike, you got 5 through 8. And Carol, you got 9 through 12. Okay? All right. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me, so that I may too go and worship him. And when they, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their gifts and treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed unto their own country another way. Very good. Thank you, Carol. Good reading by all of you. <clears throat> okay, gold was the most precious metal known to the Israelites. Symbolically, it represented Power and great wealth. Christ it represented what's the P stand for? Power. <clears throat> no. Purity. Peace. Purity. That's it. It represented purity. <laughs> Very good, Rio. Give one to the birthday boy. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> <clears throat> Have you gotten your spanking today? 
You got something to look forward to tonight. <laughs>
He says she's good. They're good to go on their table, so that's great. Perfect. No, just this one section. Just this one section. All right. So we're good to go on those questions right there. So, what circum what character characterizes Jesus's kingdom? Is found in John eighteen thirty six. Not of this world. It's not of this world. Everybody have that? Yes. Not of this world. Okay. The shapers agree. That means it's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Table in the back. Way back there. Hey, Kathy. You have the second bullet. The Lord acknowledged to Pilate that he was king of the Jews in Luke 23, 3. What indicates that the governor may have believed him? It's found in John 19, 19 through 22. Did you guys get that? Next door has it? Yes. Pardon me? By the retreat, there we go. This table agree. We got it. Got that? Yeah. Good. All right. Very good. Thank you, Kimberly. But you know what? We got to stop right here and there. I see two videos. Larry, pardon me. Larry, 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 what I have said will stand, and he wrote it in all three languages. Aramaic so the Greek was on the cross. And Aramaic, they could see that he was king of the Jews. King of the Jews. Okay. So the Lord acknowledged to Pilate that he was the king of the Jews. What indicates that the governor may have believed him is because he had it written that he was king of the Jews. Okay? All right, let's start with the table in the back. Uh, everybody's got to say their name because I don't know who you are. I'm playing dumb because a lot of us don't have our name tag. So, who's that cute little girl with the glasses back there? What she is has your name? Keep going. You need to be with your glasses on. Oh, she's got. Okay, she's got her name tag on. Yeah. Okay. What's your name, honey? Jessica. Not too tight. Jessica. Jessica. Jessica, so good to have you again with us tonight, Jessica. Did you sell more than one bracelet? No. Okay, she's got a little bracelet for sale back there. Uh, no, he said more than one. Oh. Well, yeah, more than one. If you want a bracelet tonight, wear a bracelet for five dollars. She's got them on sale. And who's that lovely girl to your right there in the purple? <laughs> I don't have a name tag. Oh, okay. So, so you can ask my name. So let's see. Only tonight. Okay. I'm well, memorizing for the rest of the That's Maria. Yeah. Maria. Maria. No, Maria Teresa. Teresa. <laughs> Maria Teresa. Maria Teresa. We call it Teresa. I'm not going to try to say that three times fast. <laughs> Teresa. <laughs> Teresa. Maria. Maria Teresa. That's it. Oh, that is pretty. I like that. Okay. <laughs> and of course, we all know Barbara sit beside you. <laughs> Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Okay, and right over there beside Kathy. Danielle. Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Hi. Good to see you again, honey. I'm glad you're here. She came to the Christmas party with her with her lovely yeah. aunt and Kathy. And of course, we have Kathy Devlin with us tonight. Good to see you. All right. Um, okay, we got Robert and Bob Schaefer. Back there in the back. Robert and Bob. Robert, Robert and Bob Schaefer. Robert. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Robert and Kimberly. Better get your eyes together there. I think Kimberly's going to see me after class. <laughs> 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 Robert and Bob Schaefer. Robert and Bob Schaefer. Okay, Marcel, you introduce us at your table. Uh, Peggy. <laughs> Uh, Peggy, Veronica, and Carol. We got Marcel, Peggy, Peggy Veronica, Veronica, and Carol. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, and of course we got Greg. Greg's with us tonight. Let's give it up for Greg. All right, Greg. Greg. And over here, starting in the in the, the beautiful chain around his neck. Steve. Oh, Steve. Steve. All right, Steve. How you doing, buddy? Good. And of course we got Brown sitting right beside him. Hi, Brown. How you doing? Okay. If I said, don't ask me a question, I'll punch you. <laughs> okay, what's this young man's name right here? David. David, all right. Glad to see you tonight, David. And he's going to be going out to California shortly, visiting out there in San Diego. Yeah. Going out there for a couple weeks, visiting family, and uh, he's going to go surfing. Promise me he won't get eaten by the sharks, and come on back. <laughs> sure is. Okay, and then we've got this lovely Santa Miss Santa Claus with you. Who's this? Whatever you want to call me. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll call you Lilani. I'll lead it. That way I'm safe. No, we got to pray for Lilani's car. It broke down last night, and um, and um, so we had to, she had to have a tow home, and um, so going to have to get a mechanic really to figure out what's wrong with it because she was told a couple of different things. But uh, hopefully it won't be anything too expensive. And she'll have a real... Do you have a way home tonight? Yes. Okay, good. And that handsome young man beside you over there. Tim. 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 That's right. If you don't yeah. find him here, you can find him in the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> and a big round of applause to our videographer tonight. Woo! Okay, all right. That's exactly right. Good, you know, give us three uh, number. And uh, what's that? There's uh, the Italian stallion right there beside you. Santa Claus. I'm Santa. There's Mr. Cliff. There's Mr. Cliff. Mr. Cliff. Thank There's you. Mr. Cliff. Yeah, the big red dog. And Lynn. Right? Hey, Lynn. How you doing, honey? She, I'll tell you, she's really stepping up. She's helping out so much in the kitchen and here. Yeah. Uh, I saw her, you know, plugging holes in the road. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> so, well, she's jumping in and she's doing a great job. And Miss Shirley, Shirley, as you know, this is our sign girl. You know, she'll put your sign on you, you know, and make sure you have one. So if you happen to come into class and you don't have your sign on, just do a U turn, come right back out, and Shirley will take care of you. I was late to the party getting these little signs in tonight. That's why you might not have one. So that's uh, mostly my fault. And let's see, that's Miss. That's the better half of Cliff, sitting right next to her. That's right. And uh, let's see, is it uh, Judy? No, it's not Judy. Is it uh, Linda? No, it's not Linda. I have three last names. Uh, three last names, all right, let's hear them. Birth, marriage, and second. Birth, <laughs> marriage, and second, all right. Birth, let's give it, yeah. let's give it up for Karen. Let's give it up for Karen. Karen, Karen. You know, that's, that's a challenge to uh, live with Cliff. And, yeah. <laughs> Amen. And all, oh, there she is. Look at her, arms folded. She said, you better be careful what you say now. So, <laughs> there's our lovely lady, Jennifer, Miss Jennifer, and her two young, handsome young men running around making sure that everything's going good. And Mama, Pauline. Where is that lid? I love the lid. Yeah. I love the lid. And I'm just so glad that they're with us. Pauline wasn't too long ago. She was just in the hospital. And uh, so she still has a little bit of cough in her, as you can see. So we need to continue to keep her in prayer. And just, and just the fact that she's here with us on a Saturday night. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. That is just wonderful. Pauline, we love you. We're so glad your daughter loves you enough to bring it. So, uh, you know, so that's wonderful. And then we have Larry. Oh, yeah. We have Larry. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the better half of Larry isn't here tonight, as you all know. So, uh, but she's getting better. She's getting better. And then we have the rowdy group over here. Yeah. Uh, starting with uh, Mike, Big Mike, Mike Slayball. Everybody know? Big Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike will scare you away just talking to you. What do you want? <laughs> hey, Mike, hey. Did you ask me a question? You better mean it. <laughs> he did a great job last night. <laughs> he did a great job. He put all the tickets together, and I bet it was just wonderful. We had a great time last night. Yeah, so Mike. 
and uh, this is going to be every time that the, uh, the this group is here every year, we got to make it an annual commitment that we got to get plugged in and doing that. And whoever didn't get to join us last night, please, we'll make sure you get an invite next year. Uh, and and uh, not only that you come, but you buy me a ticket. Uh, and then uh, our Miss Medora, Miss Medora, she's, uh, she's with us tonight, ordinary as ever. And, uh, and, and, and I'll tell you one thing, if you don't know this about Medora, you better know it now. If you're walking out of the church, the big building over here, she will definitely snag you to bring you a small group Bible study. She is... See, what is the Jewish word for umfa? What's that word? I mean, she's got the, the umfa. Uh, you know, most men don't have it. Umfa, that's the word I'm looking for. So, good thing Stuart isn't here. I'd get in trouble for not saying that right now. So, um, but anyway, and our lovely, our lovely Rita Miller. I'm just so glad she's here tonight. And um, let's give it up to Miss Rita. I don't know if you've, you've read the Christmas party. Remember her playing the piano? Yeah. Now we know we got talent in the room, and we're going to take advantage of that. So we hope to have her back on the keyboard as quickly as we can. And, um, and of course, our banker, Miss Donna. And uh, she's Big Red. Big Red. Oh, yeah, Big Red. Big Red. And she's always chasing Cliff for receipts. <laughs> <laughs> you got to see these two. They're amazing. Cliff, 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 Cliff. <laughs> That's right. Who has to do the end of the year review? And here's Cliff. I got him somewhere. I got him somewhere. What's, what's the big deal? <laughs> and of course, Serena, our Irish girl. <laughs> but Miss Serena, she's been doing this a long time, and boy, she jumps in, and she's been helping out a lot, too. And uh, no one has the heart to tell her she's not that good. <laughs> But seriously, she's back there, and she had a ball last night. She was just having a great time. And um, and of course, our birthday boy. Our birthday boy. Should we do it now? Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Happy birthday.
That's a personal inventory question. That's something that you just have to think about yourself. Do I allow Jesus to be the ruler of my life? And you know, sometimes we don't. And that's just that's just the human in us. Because sometimes we'll jump in and we'll make a decision. It may be uh, on an automobile. It may be in a relationship. It may be, when, you know, just going out uh, and you met a friend and you you end up going out for coffee, next thing you know you're at the mall and you're spending $100 you didn't even plan on. And then you're wondering why. Well, that's because we forgot to take a moment and say, Lord, direct my steps. What can I do to praise you? What can I do to honor you today? Because tomorrow's promised to no one. So what can I do today to make a difference in this world and someone's life? Shouldn't that be our challenge, our question to ourselves every day? Okay, and then uh, the last part of that is what hinders your submission to him. If you're struggling with that, what hinders it? Pride. Pride could hinder it. That's ego. very good. Yeah, ego. And just maybe the sin itself that you're dealing with. It's a giant in your life. And you know you fall victim to it. And, and, and so many times we'll say, you know what, Lord, this is the last time I'm going to do this. And we mean it, don't we? I mean, we're, we're really heartfelt, sincere. But then that day later, ten, ten days later, two weeks later, whatever it might be, we'll be right back in it because we say, well, you know what? He understands my situation. We start, you know, it's a little bit like we convince ourselves. You know, he understands. And I'm a, and so what? I, I know I'm a sinner and it's okay to sin. Well, that's, then you're missing the point of the relationship that Christ wants to have with you. Every day, he wants you to take up the cross. Every day, he wants you to understand that he knows you got a battle. He fought that battle that you fight. He said he took him on straight away for 40 days in the wilderness, remember? And he was tempted upon temptation upon temptation. But he never gave. The king of the universe says all things under his control as it says in Colossians. How does this make you feel about the stresses in your life that seem unmanageable? And again, that's something that you should evaluate to yourself. When you read what it says in the scripture and then you bring it home and say, what's the, what's the application here with me? What's the application? What is Christmas all about? What does these gifts mean? So gold represents the precious metal. It represents that we understand that the Magi's gift of gold honors Jesus as a king. We offer and we recognize him as a king in a different way. We have him as the king of our life. The king that we want to follow. The CEO of the Lord. So yes, the, the symbolism was there in the gold and what it meant. If you remember, remember Bathsheba, not Bathsheba. Yeah, not Bathsheba. Queen of Sheba. Queen of Ruhaheba. Of David, remember? For Solomon. No, no, no. I'm thinking of Solomon. The Queen of Sheba. Queen of Sheba. Yeah, Queen of Sheba. Remember, she brought him a bunch of what? Gold. And metals. Oh, excuse me, and perfume and things of this nature. And the scripture is very clear on that. Again, she was honoring him as king. And one of the first gifts she gave him was gold. In fact, was, I think the Bible says 120 talents. A talent equals about 75 pounds. 120 times 75 pounds of gold. That's what she thought and recognized him. Number two, frankincense. According to the Merriam-Webster, you read all of that. 1 John 5.13 says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Now here's, the, here's, here's what I want you to underline on your piece of paper. So whenever you read this, because I know you're familiar with this passage, this isn't the first time you've seen this. But what you should underline here is the second half starting with so. So that you may know that you have eternal life. 
You know, when I read that, I, I, I can't help but think. John 5.13, he says, I, I get the feeling that the first half was said with the soft music and the pretty butterflies and the angels flying in the background. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. But the emphasis, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Do you understand what that means? That's this gift, this little baby. So you can have eternal life in heaven. There's two ways incense was used in the temple in Exodus 30 and Leviticus. You guys get that far? Anybody get there? And the last thing it says, there's two ways incense, incense was used in the temple. It was used for anointing. Mm -hmm. Pleasing to God. And since it had a nice aroma. Oh, yeah. There's an aroma of pleasing to God. That, that, that's why this gift is important. So we have a gift that's of gold showing that we recognize, they want to recognize him as the king. And an incense because of, again, a very expensive gift. What did burning incense symbolize in Revelation? Prayers. 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 Prayers of the saints. Prayers what? Prayers of the saints. Prayer. I'm sorry. Prayers of the saints. Yes. Prayers of the saints. Okay, page two. We'll go through this quickly. The gift of frankincense, because of the role in the temple worship, prophesies of Jesus' role as our. High priest, very good. Of our high priest. In fact, remember that's what when Pastor Corey was talking tonight. Remember he, when he referred to Jesus a couple times, it was our high priest in the heavenly temple. Christ presented his crucified body to the Father as what? Sacrifice. In Hebrews 9, 11 and 12. Anybody get there? Exactly. Christ presented his crucified body to the Father as what? Doing away with the need for animal sacrifices. He became the sacrificial lamb. How are we going on time? What time is it? 851. Okay, we'll wrap it up. Let's jump. I won't let you go ahead. How about if you just do your homework on the next three bullets there, four bullets? Look at those. <coughs> Jewish priests acted as mediators between God and man. What can we now approach the Lord without? And can we? Why can we now approach the Lord without an intermediary? You'll find that because of Jesus, and you'll find, read more about that in First Timothy, two five. If you read Hebrews, it'll give you two reasons why Jesus is a better high priest than the leaders of old, and do you feel confident approaching God without an earthly mediator? Why or why not? Okay? How can knowing that Christ is your mediator transform your relationship with the Father? I think that's a great question, because it just gives you an opportunity to share your heart with Him. Myrrh, like frankincense, is a dry sap of certain trees. Transportation costs made those substances very expensive. Marion Webster gives a definition there where the trees come from Eastern Africa and Arabia. Myrrh was an ingredient in perfumes and incense in ancient times. It was valued for its antiseptic and anti-inflammatory qualities. True or false? To this day, myrrh is found in salve, mouthwash, and toothpaste. True. True. I got a truth. True. True? You guys buying this? Yeah. It's true. <laughs> That's true. <clears throat> so to this day, myrrh is still used in those products. See, called? you didn't know that. What's it called, though? It's called uh, Colgate. 
Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. As I said, to this day, murk is found in salve, mouthwash, and toothpaste. But you know, it's amazing when I when you when you, when you study this thing and it pops out at you, and I'm thinking, wow, this is this. Is, I'm brushing my teeth with what was given to Christ. Now I'm sure it's not the same herbs, the, the same thing, but it's a certain type of blood. It's used the same way. To mask the odor of decay, the Hebrews sprinkled myrrh or burial cloths, which were wrapped around the deceased. Prophetically, Burr speaks of the sacrifice Jesus would make to cleanse this world of sin. It foretells his role as Savior in Matthew 2 2, which was read earlier. So you've got those next four bullets, and, in, and ending up the Magi's gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh prophesied that Christ would be our King, our High Priest, and our Savior. As king, Jesus rules over the universe and one day will return to reign on earth. Amen. As high priest, he intercedes for us so that we can approach God with confidence. That's why we say in Jesus' name, I pray. Because we are, he's our, he's our conduit. Sometimes we even start a prayer off, particularly if we're concerned and we're, we're asking for prayer for someone who's being healed. Jesus, I ask in your name for a healing of right now. We, we get very serious about that, but we want him to respond. And then as our Savior, he sacrificed his life so that salvation is available to the whole world. This is what this child is all about. Who would have thought that who would have known? As John said, the word was with us in the beginning, and then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So, because of that, this Christmas is going to be very special. This Christmas, we want to think of what these gifts mean, and what they symbolize, not only at that time, but how they meant and prophetically was looking into the future as well. That's grace as it, as it ultimately can possibly be. Do you agree? And because of that, our chains are broken. Our chains, whatever giant that you're facing in your life, Jesus Christ can unlock it and you can break it and snap it. My chains are gone. I've been set free from a gift that happened 2,000 years ago. Let's praise the song.